On this episode of ASI On Course, we're going to take a close look at the signature programs across AACPS. Welcome and thanks for joining us for ASI On Course, an Anne Arundel County Public Schools journey. We intend to take you on a fascinating trip through the county and feature the amazing that happens in our classrooms each and every day. Our travels will explore aspects of the Division of the Academic and Strategic Initiatives, whose focus is directed solely towards supporting all students in their learning travels. Welcome aboard and enjoy the ride. Our show today features several cutting-edge opportunities offered by our signature programs here in AACPS. To give us some insight into these signature programs, we're excited to welcome Rich Berger. He's the lead teacher of our signature program here in AACPS. Welcome, Rich. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> it's certainly our pleasure to have you. Now, Rich, before we get started, can you give us some insight into your background um, and to some things that have led you to being where you are today? Oh, wow. Uh, my background, 41 years in Anne Arundel County Public Schools, classroom teacher, resource teacher, teacher specialist, uh, signature as part of the Advanced Studies and Programs Office, where I've been for a good while now. I'm a teacher specialist and the lead of a three-person team supporting signature programs across all 12 of our high schools. Phenomenal. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, specifically today, we're going to look at three high schools and the signature programs and the amazing opportunities mm -hmm. that we offer. Uh, before we delve into the greatness that's happening at these schools, can you travel back in time and give us some insight into the signature program and how it came to be what it is today? Okay, well, signature is uh, a 11 or 12 years old. Uh, the concept was brought to the county by Dr. Maureen McMahon and the idea behind Signature is to offer high school students a series of courses designed to connect their classroom instruction with real world situations and college and career skills relevant to each school's local community. Signature programs provide thematic opportunities for students within their home schools. Each high school in Anne Arundel County offers a unique set of signature related courses again that are connected and were in fact chosen by members of the surrounding community. Students can choose to enroll in individual signature related courses or they can take multiple courses across their signature pathway for the opportunity to earn signature related college credit while still enrolled in high school. Wow. So that opportunity is super dynamic. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's everywhere in every high school across yes. AACPS. I want to take a moment to look at three specific high schools mm -hmm. and the value that they bring to the students. Why don't we start with Northeast High School? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about the signature theme at Northeast High School and a little bit more about what that program offers specifically? Okay, well, Northeast theme is human performance, healthy mind, body, and soul. And the idea there is what are all the issues within a community, within a state, within a nation that affect human performance? What do we do? And we don't want to think about just the athletic side, you know, it's not just athletic trainers, but in all ways, in all aspects, uh, what do we do to affect, to improve? how we are as human beings. Um, significantly at Northeast, we have an ICST group that is exemplary. ICST is Integrated Community Stakeholders Team. Mm -hmm. Each signature has an ICST that is uh, the guiding body for the program to bring in those out outside influences. You know, I'm a teacher. What do I know about the world of business? Mm -hmm. What do I know about government and industry and higher ed? So every signature has a group of people, government, industry, community organizations, higher ed, medical, and communications that are an advisory group to help connect the theme to classroom instruction. So the power of these community partnerships, looking at Northeast High School, in their first year explorations course, this group 
brought us to the idea that we need to explore for human performance community problems. Mm. And the focus of what the students were working on within the class became opioid addiction in Anne Arundel County, which is a serious problem everywhere. Absolutely. And so these folks informed us of ways to research the problem and finding guest speakers and finding, identifying careers within uh, this particular area. And eventually, uh, this led to the creation at Northeast of the Haunted House of Addiction and the Trunk or Treat activity. Mm -hmm. uh, the Haunted House of Addiction is a very engaging and somewhat terrifying look mm -hmm. at the impact addiction has on the community. Uh, it is a performance space, an informative activity uh, done by the students at Northeast High School, and it attracted thousands of visitors uh, three weeks ago, Halloween time. Wow, okay. Haunted House of, of Addictions. addictions. Yes. It certainly is a creative take on a serious issue. Mm -hmm. um, and yes. It's phenomenal that yes. the students were able to do that. And as the community partners were able to help facilitate yes. that with yes. the students, um, truly, you know, evidence of the power of partnerships. Mm -hmm. Rich, I was able to visit Northeast High School recently, and let me tell you, what I observed was phenomenal. We're here at Northeast High School with two phenomenal members of the Signature Human Performance ICST, Scott Wallace and Carol Perico. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank, thank you for having us. And thank you for being a part of the ICST. I would love for you to tell me more about that and we'll get there, but before that, can we talk about your professional roles? What do you do when you're not spending time making our school system better? Uh, I work with Anne Arundel Workforce Development Corporation. I'm the Director of Business Solutions. My part of the company is to go out and work with businesses here in Anne Arundel County to find out what their needs are, bring that information back, and see if we can help them in any way we can help them grow, thrive here in the county. Oh, phenomenal. So I can see why community partnership is really important to what you do. Very important to us. It's important to us, too. Thank you, Scott. Carol? So I am the Director of Community Outreach for the Anne Arundel County State's Attorney's Office. Mm -hmm. And in that role, I work with the school system and community members to put forward crime prevention initiatives. Oh, very nice. And I can see how that fits into the human performance signature. Well, again, thank you so much. I'm excited to talk with you all about your history with the ICST here and um, what you like about it. So can you tell me when you started, Scott, with the ICST, or how long have you been working with them? The uh, this community? is my third year. Okay. We've been involved uh, with Anne Arundel Workforce through through the ICST and helping here out here at Northeast. Very nice. And how do you like it? It's great. A lot of neat uh, projects go on, a lot of neat uh, thoughts and ideas come out. Mm -hmm. Can't act on every one of the good ones, of but course. you know, for the most part, we, we try to take the good ones and run with them and develop them. And that's one thing about Brandy. She's always developing the, the, the program and going in new directions, different directions that, that really seem to fit and bring a benefit to the school here. Absolutely. And you know, I hear phenomenal things about Brandy Dorsey, who's the signature program facilitator here all the time. It must be lots of fun coming to the meetings with the partners and Brandy, and I'm sure you all get a lot done. It is. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm sure. Carol? And I've been here for about three years as well. Um, I love the opportunity to work with Brandy and the other teachers and work on integrating some really innovative ideas into these projects for the students and engage them in some hands-on learning that really brings connections to the outside world for them. You know, I hear about that a lot, that there's a lot of innovative ideas that go on and really cool projects that are discussed in the ICST. I'm interested to know what your favorite is, your favorite initiative, your favorite project, your favorite event um, that the ICST helps with with the signature program here at Northeast. Okay. For me, it's definitely the Haunted House of Addictions. Yeah. Uh, we have been wow. doing that now for two years. Um, I know the first time Brandy mentioned it, I was like, well, okay, I mean, I did a quick Google search. We started finding things, <laughs> and then we took off from there, and it's been, it's invigorating. It's very entertaining and engaging, and the students um, really take it on and take on ownership, and um, the learning that takes place for them and then how they want to take what they've learned and then transfer it to the community and to other students. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a great experience. It's such an interesting pairing, talking about innovative, haunted house of addictions. And I know that in the state of Maryland and really across our nation, the opioid crisis is a big deal, um, to say the very least. 
So I think it's just wonderful that the students have that opportunity and the community partners have the opportunity to give back to those around us and maybe help address that issue. Thanks for sharing, Carol. What about you, Scott? What's your favorite? Uh, we did a program here called The Game of Life. Oh. And the whole idea was to expose graduating seniors basically and, and 11th graders too to what is that what's the next step look like mm -hmm. and we brought in a whole bunch of different community partners business members business owners things like that and they talked about different aspects aspect, yeah, aspects of life mm -hmm. uh, part of it was financial part of it was social mm -hmm. and part of it was how do they blend together and mm -hmm. and where do they cross so what are some good things you want to do and maybe some things you want to watch out for and mm -hmm. how that all affects your moving forward in your life Wow, that sounds like a great 360 degree all around experience for the students. I really just want to take a moment to thank you both. Um, the support that you give to Brandy, to the program, to our students is invaluable. And um, you know, you probably hear it enough, but we can't say it enough. Thank you so much for not only being here with me today, but for also giving so much to our children. Thank you. Thank you. The final signature program that we're going to highlight today is a signature program at Glen Burnie High School. Now, Rich, a little birdie told me that there's a brand new 911 call takers course. Can you tell me, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, about Glen Burnie, about this course and about the signature theme at Glen Burnie High School? Okay. Glen Burnie's theme is public service. And uh, the county police came to us uh, about two years ago recognizing a need for 911 call takers and seeing that the public service theme of Glen Burnie would be a perfect place to try and run a call taker training class so that these students who had an interest in law enforcement public service careers could be uh, trained in 911 call taking and could potentially feed the county's need for people in this field. Uh, the 911 call taker program nationwide is constantly churning and turning over and they need students, they need people to fill these jobs. Um, the police have been incredible partners in this, providing us with the curriculum, providing us with the instructor, helping to create a new computer lab at Glen Burnie High so the students could take their training in call taking and see all the things that a call taker would see on their screen to identify the location to uh, to help police and fire uh, reach a location of some situation or emergency. Um, when these students graduate, and this is a class for seniors only because they have to be 18, uh, in order to apply for positions as 911 call takers. When these students graduate at the end of this school year, they will be fully prepared and uh, encouraged to apply to be 911 call takers with Anne Arundel County Police. Incredible opportunity for our children. It's a great day at Glen Burnie High School. We are here with Miss Janice Newman, and she is the course leader, the teacher, of the 911 First Responders course. Janet, I'm Janice, I'm so happy to be here with you today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So can you give me the correct name, the official title of the 911 course? Well, I'd say we're calling it the Glen Burnie High School Public Service Signature 911 Call Taking Course. Got it. So it is a part of the signature program uh, at Glen Burnie High School's uh, course program. Yes. Awesome. So what has been your experience with the course? Um, how did it come to be? And then what are some experiences that students have? So that's a three-part question. First of all, the course is to planning to mimic what a person that's hired as a 911 operator, whether it be a call taker or a dispatcher for the Anne Arundel County Police Department, would, what they would get if they were hired new. So mm -hmm. the idea is to mimic what those people would learn only in a school environment. Um, and make it so that it's uh, able to fit the curriculum throughout the whole year rather than taking a six or eight week course at the police department as a new hired employee. Can you give me some background about the course and some of the experiences that the students will have while taking the course? Okay, so the background of the course would be that there are some people that kind of got together and said, hey, we would like to see if we can reach out to this group of people. Um, looking at students coming out of high school and how really ready they are with media type stuff and um, how quick they can think and um, 
like they're so into using different kinds of like the keyboards and computers and stuff like that they're very savvy mm -hmm. so let's look at them and see what they can do and give them an opportunity to um, get into a career field that maybe they didn't know even existed Wow so um, a lot of people want to grow up and be police officers and want to be firefighters mm -hmm. but they don't think about you know who's behind the mic on the other end of that so the goal then would be to get this young group of people okay. um, ready to do that type of work. Mm -hmm. And my understanding, thank you for that, my understanding is that the students are getting um, the same experiences that an adult who's training to be a 911 call taker um, is going to get, but just in a different format. Can you let me know how that works? Mike, so um, what we're trying to do here is to mimic what somebody that would be newly hired as a call taker mm -hmm. or a dispatcher in Anne Arundel County would get um, instead of doing a class that's several weeks um, as a new hire employee, they'll take this throughout the course of the year. Wow. Um, so this class started in September and will end in June, mm -hmm. um, or May 23rd actually, because that's the last day for, <laughs> for high school seniors. Uh -huh. I mean, it is geared just towards high school seniors, mm -hmm. and the class is an hour and a half. So versus people that go to work to learn the job eight hours a day for several weeks, they're coming in here over the course of the year for an hour and a half every other day. Wow. to learn this class, but it should be mimicking what they would be learning if they were hired as a new hire employee, which in turn should ha actually help if they decide that they want to go forward with it and yeah. take the job. Absolutely. Um, they have to apply, um, but if they take the job, then that's less training that they have to do there. They'll be more ready for doing stuff right on the floor. Absolutely. I mean, talk about real world relevance, college and career readiness, or career readiness. I'm getting really excited as an educator. Um, I'm sure that the students are appreciative of this experience as well. And we talk often about first responders um, and how this is set up as a first responders course. But in the conversation that we've had off camera, you let me know there was a difference between what the students are doing and what we necessarily would classify as first responders. Can you explain? Yes, yeah, so most people probably think the first responder is the police officer or firefighter. Mm -hmm. And they're the first people that are on a scene. But when somebody calls 911, the call taker, the person that they get on the phone, mm -hmm. is the first first responder, the yeah. first person to actually give the person that's calling in the help that they need. So we actually are training first responders, just in a different context, <laughs> just a different context. Than, than what is usually uh, socially understood. Yes. That's great. So I just have one final question for you. Okay. If you had to pick, let's say your students could only take away one key thing about this course, and you knew they could only walk away with one thing, what is the one thing that you would want them to walk away with? All right. So I know that some of them are not going to move on to this to be their career field. Some want to be firefighters and some want to be police officers. Mm -hmm. Some just want the knowledge of it. So I'm going to say that's what I want them to walk away with, at least the knowledge of when they're the ones who have to make a call, mm -hmm. that they'll know the right information that they need to give to provide someone, and that they're going to share this with their family and friends so that when they need help and they call in, that they'll know the right thing to do. Phenomenal. It doesn't hurt that they also can walk away with a certification, that right? That would be way awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ms. Newman, for yes. having me, and thank you so much for what you're doing because I know that you're teaching for the public service program, but imparting this knowledge and insight into the students is actually a public service in itself, so we appreciate you, and thanks for having me here today. Thanks very much for coming. Rich, I just want to thank you so much for coming and joining us at ASI On Course today. You shared some amazing opportunities in our signature programs, and I'm sure that the impact is going to be lasting for all students that have been involved. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Jasmine. And thank you for joining us here at On Course. On behalf of the Office of AACPS Signature Program and the Division of Academics and Strategic Initiatives, we hope that you found this information useful and now have a better understanding of all the awesome that AACPS has to offer. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again as we keep ASI on course in Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Hi, I'm Jeannie Porter. Anne Arundel County Public Schools Department of Transportation is raising the level of awareness for the safety of your children as we transport them to and from school. When a school bus stops to load students, 
As a driver, this is what you will see. At 150 feet, the bus will activate hazard lights. At 100 feet, the bus driver will activate the amber lights. They will start slowing down. At 10 feet before the bus stops, they will turn on the red bus lights. Their stop sign will come out and students will begin to load. Once all students are on board safely, the bus driver will turn off red lights and move forward. At this time, it is safe for the motorist to resume movement. From the time really I was in high school, I started to see that fundraising, especially as a student, could be a way to contribute no matter what it is that you're good at or what you care about. My older brother told me about this film called The Rough Cut. It's a documentary made by the founders of Invisible Children. They went to Uganda, stumbled into the situation of child soldiers happening there. It was the first time that I had really been hit over the head with, wow, the world is bigger. There's more going on. People need support. We went back to school the next day and talked to one of our teachers about starting a club for all of this and basically started a chapter of Amnesty International. We were following kind of the Amnesty International model of writing letters to foreign governments about prisoners of conscience. And she came in with another group of students in her class and they wanted to do things. So we had students that would do car washes and bake sales. When it's for something good and for something that you care about, you are asking them to join you. You're asking them to be a part of what you believe in. Senior year, we did a walk for Uganda and raised about $5,000. The movie stated something that these children would walk 3.2 miles to get to their classrooms and they would do it at night. So we went out on the BNA trail and we did a walk that was 3.2 miles and it was a great success, and we repeated it year after year. I definitely think I learned a lot from my early days in fundraising that has stuck with me. <laughs> I work for the Nexus Fund. We are a small nonprofit that works to prevent mass atrocities and genocide. So we go into countries that are statistically shown to be at high risk, but where there's still time for prevention. And we go in and we identify local partners, local organizations on the ground. We ask them, what do you need to prevent violence in your communities? And then we fund those efforts. Part of what I've really come to learn as I've gotten older is that the best way that I can help people in these situations is by supporting them in their own work. I will never understand how to solve problems in Northern Nigeria like a Northern Nigerian will. And so the best thing I can do is help get them resources. One of my field staffers, because he is Christian in a town that is about 90% Muslim, there was an attack that broke out. And so his house was bombed, his car was bombed. He literally was in hiding with his family. And he's telling me the story and I'm just like, how did you get through this? And his response is, well, I started a nonprofit. So he runs programs with youth where they play soccer and they're from all different religions and they're on all different teams together and that's how they build dialogue and peace through soccer. I was just so impressed because I was, I was like, how did you take this really awful experience and turn that into something so powerful? And he just kept saying, you know, I, I just believe love is the key to blocking hatred. We have to, we have to do more. I, I've traveled a lot and I've been very fortunate to be abroad a good amount but I have never been in places that have been faced with such fear and such violence. So the trip was equally heartbreaking and inspiring. They're just so strong and so resilient. That really motivates me to do what I can. And I think that it's my duty to give back to people that literally just don't have the same opportunities, not through any fault of their own, not through anything they've done, but because they got dealt a different hand. To be dealt that hand of cards, I just can't imagine. And uh, there are things that we can do to prevent that. So it kills me that we're not doing more and I, I just get so motivated and so fired up to try to make the world a better place in that way. I just think that Maggie really saw that need that as, you know, humans we should be reaching out and helping each other. It, it just it makes you feel good that you're doing something that is meaningful. You don't do work like this for glory or recognition, but I care a lot about it and I know that what I'm doing is making a difference in the world. 
being a teenager is really hard. <laughs> you go through a lot and are learning a lot about yourself and growing up a lot. And so to have a really supportive family of teachers that look out for you and take care of you and challenge you to do more and then kind of set you free into the world, equipped with everything you need, it's really wonderful. Severna Park really gave us the options to pursue our dreams. Maggie Leahy, Severna Park High School, class of 2007. Hi, I'm Wiley Baker. Join me later today for Anne Arundel County Public Schools Athletes in Action right here on AACPS TV. Welcome to the environmental literacy experience for all kindergartners in Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Every kindergarten class participates in an outdoor environmental program called Trees Are Terrific at a site in Anne Arundel County. Through engaging hands-on activities, students investigate the life cycle of a tree, learn about forest ecology, discover that trees protect water quality, and take action to help the environment. This is part of the Kindergarten Interdisciplinary Environmental Literacy Unit that includes a day of learning at school, a field experience, and a day of reflection and communication back at school. They are gonna bring their learning back into the classroom and then what I'm trying to teach them is going to make so much more sense. So I've introduced it, but now they're going to be able to tell me what those roots do, what the stem of a plant is going to do, because they're going to compare it to a trunk of the tree that they've been out here and seen. So bringing the, all that learning and experience into the classroom just widens their horizon and their paradigm. I mean, it's just beyond belief what they'll be able to tell me because my question is going to be tomorrow morning, why are trees so terrific? In the spring, students will put their knowledge and experience to work. They plant and care for a tree at school and promote tree conservation through reducing, reusing, and recycling tree products. From beginning to end, this unit integrates standards for environmental literacy, science, social studies, common core, language arts and math, physical education, and other content areas. Almost any aspect of this experience can be magical for a child walking on an unpaved trail, looking up into the forest canopy, listening to birds sing, measuring an ancient tree by holding hands with a friend, riding in a rowboat, holding a fish, collecting tree seeds, building a nest, or digging in the leaf litter. These and other hands-on experiences make a lasting impression on kindergartners. For them to be able to feel it and touch it and see it at its different stages, from the seeds, the small trees, the large trees, um, being on the water, all of that, it kind of brings it full circle for the kids where a lot of times in the classroom it's kind of segmented so they don't get to see that full picture. Being outside should help any kid. It's better than being locked up inside. Supervision and instruction are provided by Environmental Literacy and Outdoor Education Office teachers and volunteers recruited by the schools. These volunteers are essential to a safe and successful outdoor learning experience. It's important for my children to know that they have to respect the outdoors and leave it as it is so that they can continue to have the things that they like. The new kindergarten, first, and second grade curriculums are designed to engage students in a variety of learning opportunities that involve cooperation and problem solving. What do I do? Student discourse and structured play develop social foundations through peer interactions. This learning block promotes curiosity, 
imaginative thought, and responsiveness. The primary focus is on the work of young children, play. The use of tools and materials allow students to share, take turns, and develop the confidence to make effective decisions in school and in life. Ask your child how they interacted with their friends today while engaging in structured play.